Okay, so there was a chef that, that worked here. I'm saying this because I know you can try to edit it out. So there was a chef that had a food truck, and one of his things he would do was watermelon pop rocks. Blew my mind. You know, so this is kind of, this is his dish. I just kind of added some stuff to it. This is gonna be pretty easy. So what I wanna do first is we're gonna get our tomatoes. You can use any tomatoes. It's just that my friend had these in there. So I'm taking them and using them instead. Cut them like this, long ways, right? And then, it depends on how much tomatoes you like, right? You like a lot of tomatoes, like a little bit of tomatoes. You know, you can use Romas, you can use five by five, six by five, 10 by fives. Those are all made up, like the only one I know is like five by fives. Um, you use yellow tomatoes, you can use green tomatoes, right? So, so right now, okay, so, so we have our tomatoes cut, right? They look all fancy. Then we're gonna do watermelon, right? And everyone's all like, watermelon, that's so weird. Watermelon and tomatoes. Actually, they go pretty well together, right? Cause it's tart, acidic, right? They, they, they complement each other. So these, the, so these tomatoes I'm gonna use, I mean, these, uh, this watermelon I'm gonna use is a little bit older, but that's what we want because it's gonna be a little bit sweeter, right? So then what we're gonna do is, where's my spoon? We're gonna get this, and we're gonna throw in our tomato, our watermelon, right? The worst thing is getting that really soft, squishy one. That weirds me out, it's like wet bread or a wet piece of toilet paper. <laughs> you don't want that, man, it's gross. Okay, so you see like I have my tomatoes and my watermelon in there, right? Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare our shrimp. So, for our shrimp, okay, so for the shrimp, okay, a real big thing, guys. Um, I was classically trained, I went to culinary school, you know, I worked in fine dining places, and yes, we can make a court bouillon and poach shrimp and be super fancy, but you know what? That's gonna cost us an arm and a leg. You know what I mean? Who has time for that? And then the thing is that, you know, people's palates are different, you know? And, you know, I want something that, that something that everyone's gonna like. If you go to HEB, you can buy the cooked shrimp and it's five bucks, right? And that's more than enough for, th like that's, that's enough for like three people right there. That shrimp, we bought it already, already cooked in a bag. Make it easy to make your own shrimp. You know, you can make a court bouillon and do all your fancy stuff, you know? But this is something that's, hey man, I don't got time to make dinner, you know, or, you know, you're by yourself, you're like, hey man, something I can make easily, I don't have to worry about it. Okay, so we're gonna get shrimp, right? And then we're gonna get rice vinegar. Rice wine vinegar, I like to use just cause it's on the sweeter side than say like white, you know, like white wine vinegar, super strong. Red wine, it's a little sweet. Rice wine, super sweet, right? So I like to use it for a lot of my stuff. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna toss the, we're gonna put a little bit over it, like that, all right? Then we're gonna get our lime, all right? I remember how we talked about cutting the lime? If we cut one side off, flip it, cut the other side off, all right? Flip it, that part, and that part. So now you have these pieces, right? So now we're gonna add our lime juice. Yee, míralo, look at all that juice. Saw that? I promise you, if you cut it like this, you get a lot of juice. If you do it the other way, no hombre, you're not gonna get no juice. It'll be all seco, right? That's not. That's what you don't want, right? So we have, So it's kind of like making a ceviche, right? We're kind of like, oh, míralo, he's making ceviche. I know, everyone has their favorite ceviche, all right? Okay, so then we have the, so now we have acid on acid, right? So now we're just tossing and turning in like this, right? We'll make sure it's all good. Right, and then we taste the piece to make sure it's acidic enough. Okay, then we all have this, right, for our beer. I don't know what it is, but we all love it. And it's crazy, because right here it says, not for cooking purposes only. I don't even cook with the damn thing. I like it in my beer. Well, all, all my beer is what I usually drink it in. But I usually put it whatever I can put it in. Okay, so, but I like using it for seasoning because I think it has everything you're looking for in a seasoning, right? So then we add, add it to the shrimp like that. Okay, and we toss all the shrimp in it again. And I'm a very sour person, so if I don't pick up the, the, the flavor, I feel like I have to add more to it. Mm. Okay. 
Okay. One more time. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we have the tomatoes and the watermelon, and then we have our shrimp, right? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our shrimp and just do like however much you want. The only reason we're not mixing it all together is because what if we have extra shrimp, then what? We can save it, we can get it by yourself, we can have tacos later on, you know? Or when you get drunk off your tapache, you drink some of that, you're good, man. So then all this juice that's left over right here, all the hugo, we're gonna get some like that from the spoon and toss it in, right? So now we're imparting all this different flavor into our, into our stuff, right? Okay, so now we're just gonna toss it like this. Okay. Then we're gonna taste the watermelon just to make sure. So remember, remember, remember. We always season everything, right? We always use salt and pepper. But since I used our our powder, we really gotta use pepper, right? Because it already has all that all those kind of like profiles. But we are gonna add salt though. This is a real fancy salt. I like using kosher salt because you can pick it up, sprinkle. You know how much you're using. This is like just eyeballing it, so. Those are big pieces, it looks like dandruff. It's huge. Okay, that's good. Okay, and then you don't have to use this, um, you know, but basil, I'm pretty sure everyone has a neighbor that's growing it. You go by, they don't know, take a piece. You know, you go downtown by the Alamo, they grow it. You know what, no one cares, we'll take a piece. Tell them tattoo said it was okay. All right, so then, so this technique I'm gonna show you is called a chef or not. Right? So what we do is, so a chef and I, it's a, it's a cutting technique, right? We get a leaf and then we put another leaf inside, right? I know, I know, it's taking forever. So we put a leaf, put another leaf, then we put another leaf, then we put another leaf. Then we roll, we roll it up like a doobie. You know what that means. So then we roll it tight, right? And there's, I like to fold mine in half. I know my chef friends are gonna give me hell for it, cut, doing it in half. And then all we do is chiffonade, right? In little strips. Miralo. See, now everyone's all like, oh, that's so fancy. Look, he knows how to cut basil. It's proper technique, right? Like that. So now it's gonna be a little herbaceous. That's the first big word I learned like in like last 20 years. It's very herbaceous. Herbaceous, you know, I, I learned the word and my wife hates it because I use it for everything. Her car smells very herbaceous. So, so now we have, now it looks like this, right? It has all this good stuff on there, all right? Okay, now to finish it off. All we gonna do is get our little fancy bowl, like this, right? And then, me, um, I'm always um, peculiar about the way I do stuff, so. Well, this is just for one person right here, right? So then we're piling it on. Not too fancy. Okay, that's gonna drive me crazy because it has to look fancy. Okay. Okay, so then this is our little salad. It cost us maybe, maybe like $12, $13. But it's something that we can have any time. Something if you want to just do a snack while watching, trying to watch what we eat, right? But to finish it off, I like to use this can. I can't say the name of the candy, but let me just tell you, it's a candy that pops in your mouth. And they're the shape of rocks. That's all I could say. Okay, so then what we do is, this is me, cause I like, anyone that knows me, knows all my weird stuff, I always have to add something weird to my food. So then we do this thing. And it's like Rice Krispie Treats. The Pop Rocks just adds, it, you know, just a little bit of fun to it. Now you have it and it's weird because it adds, adds texture, adds flavor, but at the end you're kind of like, oh man, this is, this is so weird because it's good. It's different, but it's good. So this is something fun, something for the kids. The kids will love it. And you don't have to um, add shrimp. You could just do the, the watermelon if you want to. It's also cool, man, if you want to, if you have crackers, you're like a kind of like a fun, not like a dip, but something you can eat with your crackers while you're watching TV. It's one of those simple things. A, you know, a, a guilty pleasure, if you will. And this dish is inspired by one of my friends, uh, Rudy was one of the first guys to have a food truck here in San Antonio, and his dish was always, it was watermelon, basil, and pop rocks, and it blew my mind. So thank you, Rudy, if you're watching, 
You inspired me to make this. It is not mine, but I will steal it though. Thank you, sir. 